every year I spend a lot of time putting this kind of script type thing together that I'm going to use as an intro. Um, and I have it here, but I'm probably just going to skip that. But, <laughs> but my name is Grex, and I'm honored to be here to represent or to introduce all the different speakers uh, that are going to be here for Fire, Fire Talks tonight. For those that aren't familiar with this format, it's more of a 15-minute quickie. So you basically go in, make your important points, and get out. Uh, as part of that process, we have two lovely judges with us this evening. Miss, if, if you guys want to introduce yourselves very quickly. Hi, I'm Katie Masora. Oh, oh, oh. I can't Here. use the microphone. Hold on. Oh, there we go. Hello. I'm Katie Masaurus, and I'm going to be judging some talks this evening. Uh, that's, that's pretty much all I need to say, except that we do accept bribes. Just understand this. Um, my preference is brown liquor. OK. <laughs> I'm the same person I was an hour ago. And when I registered, they said I was Donna Dixon. So I'm either Donna Dixon or Donna Dodson. And I'm happy to be up here. Thanks. But it basically comes down to 15 minutes, no, no more, no less. That includes questions. Uh, one announcement that I did want to make beforehand was that all this is streaming live. So if you are a speaker and don't want to be um, streaming live, then you need to let us know because I think we have to physically go back there and turn the camera off or put a piece of cardboard in front of it. OK? So just think about that. Um, but the first talk that we have tonight, it's called That's No Moonshot by Bo Woods. If you've read the abstract of this talk, it, it's just something that I 100% agree with. Um, and I think one of the problems that we have as in the information security community is that we're not good at com communicating outbound to the non-infosec folks. And so Bo's talk, I think, centers around that theme. And Bo is definitely the right person to hopefully push this concept or, this t or these important topics to us out to the rest of the world. So with that, I'd like to introduce Bo Woods. All right, thank you. Now let's see if I can make my tech work. Oh, no. Fail. Oh, there we go. So uh, I had this crazy idea for a talk, and I think I got a little bit drunk and submitted an abstract for it. Yeah. So uh, basically, I, I just, I'm just i sick of hearing this idea of a concept of a cyber moonshot. Um, anybody else hate the idea, too? Several people in the front row. That's good. They're the participators. Him over there, too. He wants to make sure I see him. Um, when I hear cyber moonshot, you know, I think about uh, the, the 1963 Kennedy speech at Rice University, where uh, essentially Kennedy laid out a vision, a very clear, distinct, achievable mission, where, you know, when it ended up happening, about half of the planet was watching it on television, those that had televisions. The rest read about it the next day or heard it on the radio. And it was an achievement that humanity itself could be proud of. Um, and it was something where when it happened, you knew it. And the line that just resonates with me is he says, we choose to go to the moon, not because it's easy, but because it is hard. So that to me is what a moonshot is. It's, it's the galvanizing of all of society towards a single common goal. It had some other features to it, uh, which are more military in nature, but uh, those for me are less of what we're talking about in a, a cyber moonshot than anything else. And I think a lot of the people who talk about having a cyber moonshot have this impression that cybersecurity, yes, I'm gonna say cyber a lot and I'll drink for it later, I promise, um, that you know, you've got these evil, skilled hackers. They work in packs and teams, and they're like wolves. They're really advanced, wolves with, 
hoodies and hands on keyboard that are moving so fast the camera can't take a picture of them. You know the type I'm talking about. And that they're using all of these advanced tools and, and just hammering away at the best defenses that we have to invade our national security, our financial system, um, our private sector, our governments, and they get in everywhere they try. And this is why you get things like, you know, we need a self-healing machine learning, blockchain, Bitcoin, uh, mining, everything. But let's look at some of the action. Uh, the OPM breach, for instance,
bastardized Kennedy's speech. We must choose to do what we know works, not just because it's easy, but because it is necessary. Otherwise, the trade-offs are huge. Um, we've gone through a period where, uh, I'm gonna skip to this slide because I got them out of order. Just through mobile, social, connectivity, uh, high degrees of being able to keep touch with people around the world, we've shrunk the globe. At the same time, we've changed the relationship between citizens and the government. Um, anymore, there's this new kind of a struggle for chaos and order uh, that is manifested in some of the things that we've seen going back to the early 2010s, things like the Arab Spring Revolt, things like uh, some of the refugee crises that we're seeing across Europe right now. Um, the national identity, trust and rule of law, uh, common family and communities, spirituality and religion, some of the things that underpinned uh, the idea of a social contract are starting to change in ways that we couldn't have predicted even 20 years ago. This is what the legacy of technology has brought us over the last 20 years. Over the next 20 years, it's gonna be even more amazing. These are our moonshots. Things like artificial intelligence and machine learning. And yes, those are buzzwords, so I'll drink for them later. No schmoo balls, please, yet. Um, things like blockchain and distributed ledgers, the capabilities that those things can bring. We have literal moonshots. SpaceX is going to Mars. Uh, Elon Musk is gonna take a Tesla and himself up to Mars and drive it around for a little while until he you know, eventually runs out of gas himself. Uh, we have additive manufacturing, reducing the cost and lead time for shipping uh, and for logistics. We have autonomous vehicles, which promise, uh, have the potential to save something like 30,000 lives a year in the US alone, if that promise pays off. We have augmented humanity, so we can replace people's limbs with things that were better than they were before when they lose them. These are all concurrent revolutions going on right now, transforming our society in ways we couldn't imagine even five years ago. And to dig into one example in depth, uh, in healthcare, there are so many things happening right now that I had to try and diagram it out. If you know me, you know I love whiteboards. Diagram out all of these things. So imagine having the instrumentation available where your Apple Watch can tell you that you're having a condition that's so rare uh, that it might only happen once every few days that would lead to a diagnostic uh, test that a doctor can do to detect heart disease something like five to 10 years earlier. Um, the idea of the best treatment comes in a home environment with your family. We have remote telemedicine that we're already starting to leverage so that people can go home much, much earlier. There was a, a sock I heard about a few years ago that would remotely connect back to the hospital so that you could send infants home, put the sock on them, and it would be the same level of care as being in the hospital but in their own home. Um, imagine the possibilities of applying additive manufacturing technologies uh, to medicine, to, to be able to produce pharmaceuticals, drugs, vaccines in the field where they're needed most, to avoid spoilage, to avoid high costs. These things are right around the corner and they're absolutely gonna transform what it is uh, to live in, in our society and in this world. We're all on this rocket together, I guess is what I'm saying. We're on this cyber schmoon shot. <laughs> and, oh no. <laughs> that was what you threw a schmoo ball at? Okay, I'll take one. <clears throat> so look, if, uh, if we don't get these things right that we seem to fail so routinely at in corporate IT, then how do we possibly hope to succeed in things that are way more complicated, way more complex, that we're becoming way more dependent on, uh, and where we have way more to lose. So we've got to do the things we know how to do. Stuart Brand in 1968 said, we are gods and might as well get good at it. He said this reflecting on uh, essentially all the technology and capabilities, including what led to the first moonshot. 
And he's absolutely right. But I would amend that. It's not that we might as well. It's that we are like gods, and we must get good at it. So with that, I will accept your questions and schmooballs. <laughs> Any questions? Any schmoo balls? Maybe from the esteemed panel of judges? So I have a question. Okay. Um, are, what, are, are we good at some of the things that you identified as being um, things that we must do in cybersecurity? We're good enough to avoid them. Not so good that we can instantly apply these things globally around the world. So part of what we need to be researching is ways to take the pain out of the things we need to do. It's still kind of hard to patch in a globally deployed environment of things that take like a six month test cycle. Um, so there are reasons why we're not applying some of these easy things, but those are the things we should be researching where they are hard. And we've got to realign the incentives and the preconditions so that we can get there. Out there. Wait, there's a question. With the moonshot or with the shot? That, to be clear, that's no moonshot either. <laughs> Another schmoo ball coming at me. Yeah. Uh, so the question was, how do we get people to do these things? Um, the, the DC answer is it comes down to incentives and setting the preconditions. I think that we're chipping away at some of those things. If you look at the policies that have come out, policy statements from the US and around the globe in the last two years, they start to say things like, you should probably patch. <laughs> they start to say things like, you should not sue researchers who tell you about flaws that you created in these things. They start yeah. to say things, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I got one vote of support. They start to say things like, um, you know, have a plan for when something fails. Don't just lie to everybody and say it never will, right? So I think we're starting to see changes. But one observation I made is, oh, I'm out of time. <laughs> well, no, you uh, finish. Go ahead. Okay. Just don't take like five minutes. So in some of these places where we look at um, negative consequences, that is everything is fine until something happens and then it's not fine, uh, places where you would want something like insurance, we've almost always had to mandate it through some type of regulation, health insurance regulation, car insurance regulation, uh, some of the other regulations that we have, um, and UL has driven a lot of that, uh, those types of underpinnings of applying physics to these accident problems. So I'm not suggesting that we must regulate, but I'm suggesting that uh, if we don't do something soon on our own, we'll probably be facing regulation, which I don't think anybody really wants. All right. Thank you. I'll go first. I'll I have my judging comments. Okay, go ahead. You, oh, oh, I see. Okay. All right. I will go first in terms of the judging. So did any of you see the fire talks last year where I was a first-time judge? First-time judge, first-time almost peed my pants because of how many drinks. Okay, so I'm going to try and not do that this year. But I had a, uh, I basically have sort of a, a running rubric, and I award points. He doesn't care. He's, he, he knows. He's just going off stage. So I award points, ooh, sorry, based on, uh, you know, things that stick out to me that, that resonate with me, and then I take points away for things that offend me. So um, I enjoyed your, you know, basically your analogy, uh, the, the whole concept of the talk being, you know, about cyber moonshots, and I awarded you a point because uh, I 
I understood where you were going with the JFK's clear mission, and I thought the quotes were very applicable to the problem that we have today. Um, I awarded you a point because you mentioned, you know, the very important topic of public safety and health. Um, I awarded you another point because you brought up the economic impact of some of these issues. And quite frankly, um, when we talk about regulation and not regulation and all that stuff, it really comes down to economic impact. I mean, what, you know, Microsoft's trustworthy computing memo was written as a direct result of Linux threatening to unseat Microsoft's dominance. And so we know that economic impact is probably the way to go, so I give you a point. Um, I took away a point for name dropping Josh Corman. Okay. <laughs> Minus one. No, um, he's a friend of mine too, so I take a point away from myself for also name dropping him now. Um, the 2001 reference that, uh, that was the throwing of the bones, I gave you a point. I enjoyed that gif, so that was a point. Uh, took away three points for the following buzzwords that actually didn't contribute to your talk. AI, ML, blockchain, take notice if you drop those buzzwords and they don't actually contribute to your overall point, you're going down for each one. Okay, and yeah, I mean if it contributes, fine. Okay, um, I added a point because Cyber Schmoon got shot, like that was amazing. That was beautiful, right? Okay, so if you've been counting along, which you haven't, I added five points, I took away four points, I added a point at the end after I had tallied because I like the don't sue researchers. That was, that was a point given bonus. And then I also added one point for going first. So grand total, three points from me. All right. Super scientific. Yeah. <laughs> so as I looked at this, I thought your um, presentation and the examples that you provided were um, really apropos given that we're in Washington, D.C. Um, I think this is the conversation that often occurs inside the Beltway about whether to regulate or, or not regulate. Um, and, and I think that's still a really hard problem for us to, to grapple with and, and what that would do for, for innovation. Um, the one area that I, I struggled with in the, in the presentation is based on the question I ask. And some of the things that we claim are easy to do, I think there are a lot of hardworking folks who, who try to make those things happen, but there's um, a lot of challenges along the way. Um, patching, patching, patching. Patching is still hard. And, and so we, we can't ignore that, and we can't ignore what we're asking the operators to, to be able to do. Um, and I'm not, I'm not a good scorer on these. I'm with NIST. We don't pick winners or losers. <laughs> if we weren't this close to maybe me not being NIST oh. in a couple of hours, I may not be up here. So I'm going to hold my, I'm going to give a score of very good. Oh. I can see Which her real you? score and that's consistent with what she wrote there. <laughs> Wait, do you have a question for the judges? What? Oh. So the question is so the uh, East and the West Coast keep fighting each other. What's being done to fix this? He asked me to summarize my question. So um, I think you're right. I think we do have a big, big issue there. Uh, I don't know too many efforts that are specifically focused on uh, reconciling the Crips and the Bloods. Or, <laughs> now, now that the scoring's done, I'll say Cyber Crips and Cyber Bloods. <laughs> You really do have to drink. You've got to catch up oh, with I the will, drinking. Oh, I will. I oh. will. Trust me. Um, but I know that there have been uh, things like uh, I Am the Cavalry, which tries to bring a lot of different people together from a lot of different segments and sectors, not just those of us who might be in this room, but also nurses, physicians, policymakers, other you know, leaders 
Just this morning, we did a, a thing we called Hackers on the Hill, where we get a, there you go. Yeah, that's cool. Um, uh, and several folks here were, were there. And we had a congressional staffer who led us around. We also had um, the Congressional St Tech Staffers Association uh, blast out on their email list that a bunch of hackers were hanging out at the Hilton, and if they want to come have a drink with us, you can. So I think that there's a lot of things that we can do more broadly than just, uh, you know, um, blue on blue violence, if you will, <laughs> but also bring in those people who may not have ever considered us to be worth playing with and get at the same table with them, you know, break bread, have shots, do whatever. Uh, and then I think by expanding the number of people we want to bring into the tent, I think we'll have better uh, objectives. All right. Thank you. Any other love or hate? You said a lot of cybers. I don't see any drinking. Mm. I'm going upstairs. All right. I, I don't know. Well, I've been a bit distracted, so. Bo, I think you did an awesome job, man.